It's the Hero Show. Welcome to the Hero Show, everybody, where every week we seek inspiration from great men and women to become the heroes and heroines of our own lives. And you are here with your hosts. I am Andrew Bernstein. You are Robert Begley. How you doing today, Robert? I am doing great, Andy. Today, ready to talk about the need for speed in communication. A hero whose life was changed by the death of his wife, and he needed a faster way to transmit knowledge from A to B and change the world in the process. And we are talking, of course, about the great American painter and inventor, Samuel Morse, and you know, and creator of the of the telegraph, of course, is what you're referring to, Robert, and the and the, and the Morse code. It's fascinating how we think of these great intellectual achievements very often as you know, kind of coming out of a vacuum. Somebody's has, has had a, had a had a had a new idea. You know, they they used to say in in an inventive American, if you build a better mouse trap, you know, people will buy it and you'll you'll make money. Uh, but very often, great works of art or, or, or scientific advances or technological inventions very often come out of real personal, private, you know, feelings and you know and desires. And and you you make a good point there that about about Morse's uh, you know tragic loss of his of his first wife and then. Yeah, you might you might want you want you want to tell that story for everybody. Sure, Andy. Let me just say some of the themes we'll talk about is that how that motivates a person uh, to become heroic, how innovators spend half their lives in and out of court trying to retain the property that they invented, and how people just come in and claim credit afterwards. That's that's an important aspect and how his communication, how his invention revolutionized to this day, we are benefiting here by being in, by having transmission and receiving uh, different signals. He was the one that put those into practice. So those are three different themes that I want to talk about. So he was a painter, as you can see, this is a self portrait and we'll, we'll give him proper due uh, on the painting side, but just for, for this story, his wife is in New England, Lucretia. Uh, they were married seven years. She gives birth to their third child. And shortly after that, she gets very sick and they dash off a message to Morse. It goes by horseback. It takes him weeks. This is, this is what, 1820s, 1830s? What, what year? Yes, is it? 1825. 1825. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, by the time he's he's doing a painting, he's painting somebody. He's in their home. It's far away from New England. And by the time he gets the message, he drops everything, rushes up to New England. She's dead and buried. And he's like, I got to figure that. I, I Yeah, I have to figure out some faster way to make communication possible uh, so that people can, <laughs> you know, reach their loved ones and take action to that effect. So yeah, there's there's some personal significance here and it drove him from a young age. He's in his thirties and he's a world renowned painter. He's starting the art school of design in New York uh, city. He's teaching at NYU. He's got this complete artistic side of him, which is, you know, is how he's earning a living, but his passion is electronics using the speed of lightning. He went from the speed of horses to the speed of lightning over the course of his life. That's a really sad story, but it shows, you know, shows the motivation you know, you're behind this, and of course the power, the power, the power of romantic love. It's it's just fascinating, you know. I mean, the, just it's it's not even two hundred years from Pony Express to, you know, to. Uh, uh, send it, send it instant messages and you know and emails around the around the world. This was Samuel Morse's vision. He, he's like the fountainhead of these advances in technology to, to speed up expedite communication enormously and how that facilitates human life. Yeah, so we can talk about persistence, Andy, as one as one of these traits here because he goes to school. He goes to Yale when he's like fourteen years old and and sees a course on attends a course on electronics, and it, that the subject is still somewhat in its infancy. 
but he's also a talented painter. So he does this portrait of Lafayette. They became good friends, but you can see the bust of George Washington and Benjamin Franklin, two most prominent Americans. Uh, despite John Adams's uh, huge envy over both of them. So look at the at the pedestals there, um, and there's an empty space, you know, ne right near Morse's right hand. Right. So I don't know. Uh, I can't tell if there's a pedestal there or if it's an empty space. But there's room at the very least. There's room for pedestals. So, so I was thinking, well, maybe Morse's bus own bus should be there. You, you know, there's the inventor of the telegraph, the Morse code the great painter that he was right next to Franklin and, and Washington. But I don't know, I don't know what, what Morse's ego was like if he is if his ego is big enough to place himself, you know, next to uh, Franklin Washington. I know I know Commodore Vanderbilt would have put himself would, would have put himself there. He's born when George Washington's president. He dies when uh US Grant. Give his day 1791 to 1872, right? I think uh, 72. So it's a long span. He has he has a 81, full life. 81 years. Yeah. Yeah. 81 years. But he starts out as a as a famous painter and he goes to Europe. And Andy, that's another thing. So while he's in Europe, he's away from home and he has to write letters. And exactly what you just said, he, he, instead of just picking up a phone, which Grant Alexander Grant Bell was inspired by uh, the telegraph, the telephone just took right the next step from the telegraph. Mm -hmm. And he, he's got to write these letters and then wait forever to hear, you know, his wife is having uh, children, you know, he still has mother and father, but he's learning to paint. He's, he's becoming accomplished and painting is what is paying the bills um, and funding his passion for communications and it's on his way back from a trip the six week uh, boat ride ship ride from the uk to america and that's where he he uh meets someone who has this idea of instantaneous uh communication talking through electricity and uh, more starts putting different pieces of the puzzle together uh, to solve this problem. And then he comes up with the idea of this code. How can we just have these dots and dashes represent all these different aspects of uh, communication, the, the alphabets? So what he does, he looks in the newspaper, Andy, and he sees the most used words, uh, letters in the words. And he finds that E, the letter E is more than any other letter it's used. So that's why it's just one dot in his Morse code he's marching forward, even though he's making money as a, a painter and then teaching at New York University. Yeah, he's a professor. He's doing well uh, at, NYU, at, the, at the school that later became NYU. Yeah, but Andy, again, okay, so how does this fit into heroism? He had paintings that went unsold and he's trying to raise a family and he's given this position. He actually, Trumbull, the famous American painter who was like a generation older than him, would also kind of belittle, um, would belittle Morse uh, as a painter. And Morse was very respectful of him. So he's facing opposition on the, uh, in, in the arts. That's one side. And then the second side is he has his passion with electronics and he's not, it's taking a lot longer than he thought it would. So even though he is a polymath, in, in the a genius in two fields, it takes a while for, to be to be rewarded commercially. You know, I love Andy how you always make this point uh, when we talk about heroes. How internally, first first you need to be successful internally. You need to maintain your integrity. You need to have like just larger than life uh, ability that you put to use. But and and you can die that way, still being heroic and be and successful. But when you attain commercial success on top of that, it's like, okay, now other people recognize it too. And I, I, I really like how you, you make that point regularly. Yeah, it's, 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 it's deserved. It's, it's justice. So let, my last point, Andy, here is on the, um, how this technology helped America at the time, uh, which was the Civil War. So both sides used, uh, used the telegraph. But the North was the more industrial and, and had the railroads and had the, it was more pro-technology, whereas the South did it somewhat out of uh, bare necessity uh, to maintain their agrarian, feudal, slave-based uh, society. But the telegraph was essential 
you know, for Lincoln, uh, Grant, Sherman uh, in the North. Sherman wired, you know, th from transmission, he, you know, he wires uh, saying that uh, Georgia is yours, you know, <laughs> to, to Lincoln. I mean, that's, uh, that's just one of the most glorious dates in American history. And Morse's technology was at the forefront of that. And, it, and it's, a, it's a very sad irony that Morse himself supported slavery. So we know we'll you know we never we've never been shy about criticizing heroes for for their flaws, including their moral flaws. And you know this is a, a great a terrible uh, moral error on Morse's part because you know the 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 abolitionist movement was was widespread in his lifetime, and you know the abolitionist movement was widespread. So uh, Morse was in the north where where you know he's, in the he's, northeast, yeah, in the New England area. So he should have known better. But we'll, we you know but we, we'll criticize him for that. But you're right about the, the efficacy of his invention in helping the Union win the Civil War. A nice side note here was young Andrew Carnegie, before he was you know, a very wealthy man, before he was in the steel industry, Carnegie was a lifelong abolitionist. And uh, you know, he was working for the Pennsylvania Railroad in his youth. And early in the war, he was helping build the, the telegraph wires along the, along the railroad tracks in Virginia. And he collapsed. For all, for all the people who later accused Carnegie of not being a hard worker, which is just bunk, uh, he collapsed from a combination of sunstroke and, and overwork. And after that, I, I can empathize with him because I hate the hot, humid weather, as you know. And after that, Carnegie couldn't tolerate the, the heat and humidity in, in the Northeast in the summertime. And when, as, as a wealthy man, he would journey back to Scotland every, and spend the summers in Scotland, his, his native Scotland, every summer where the summers are, uh, are a lot cooler. But that's just a side note here, you know, about the, you're, you're absolutely right, the telegraph, the telegraph was instrumental, the telegraph and the railroad, you know, instrumental in helping the Union de defeat the Confederacy in the, in the Civil War. And so Morse, so Morse inadvertently, you know, helps contribute to the, to the demise of the slave system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, okay, that's, um, that's it. We'll go a little bit more, Andy, through his, his biography in the second half. I'll just say you're watching The Hero Show brought to you by Objective Standard Institute. Please like and share uh, this program and go to our website, objectivestandard.org, to see we have courses coming up. Uh, down the road, Andy is going to be leading another uh, book reading group. Okay, uh, Andy, we started with his dates. 1791 to 1872. Uh, so he has these two interests, you know, but he's, by the time he's 14, he's, he's at Yale, he's studying electronics, um, has a patent uh, with his brother uh, on, if you're talking about Benjamin Franklin, he, he wanted to find a better way to put out fires. And, and he invented this uh, device that could, you know, get water there faster. Nobody was interested. So again, you know, go away, kid, you bother me, and uh, let's move on. That, that, that he never went further with that, but, uh, as, you know, as life goes on, he's, he's still, you know, he's studying electromagnetic, he's studying, uh, you know, new technologies, new ideas in technology, and doing his paintings, and raising a family, uh, bickering a bit with his father, who was a geographer, so he's got the natural world, and a Calvinist minister, so he's got the uh, the other side. And I think, Andy, if I could say, that had a big impact on Morse as a person. And I, I don't have direct evidence that this is was one of the things where where his flaw in judging slavery might have been, but he thought it was biblical. He actually thought it was from the Bible, that he didn't question that. And although he, he was anti-Catholic immigration later in life, uh, the religious aspect of him was, you know, I, I think had an impact uh, in his views on slavery. You know, Robert, the Calvinist, the strict Calvinist Protestant upbringing could certainly account for his anti-Catholic uh, stance because, you know, the Catholic, the Catholic Protestant wars raged for a long time in Europe. And there was, uh, even in the United States, you know, there, there, there were a lot of uh, Protestants who did not want Catholic immigration. So moving on with his life. So he meets Lucretia, uh, who's from New England. They marry, they have three kids. Uh, she dies and he's still doing some painting. Uh, but his interest is more in in um, the uh, this invention of the telegraph, and then it's in the eighteen uh, thirties that he's he's making the, these these uh, these breakthroughs, 
and I think it was 35. Yeah, 1835 was the first. Um, uh, th it's interesting. He He's making the invention, and the same year he <laughs> becomes a professor of literature and arts and designs at CUNY, uh, uh, City uh, College of, of New York. So he's got the, he's a Renaissance man. I mean, I, lo I love this, this art and science uh, that he has, which he wrote about. Uh, himself. He's got investors now who see the value, the businessmen, because the, the, none of these inventions will ever get off the ground without the venture capitalist saying, okay, I will put my money. We spent the whole episode on that with JP Morgan showing mm -hmm. that s someone has to believe in this product uh, and in the commercial success of it. Uh, again, here's what distinguishes Americans who have this profit motive in mind when they're inventing from Europeans who, who it's more of a matter of, let me do this and prove I can do it for the sake of doing it. And if there's some, some uh, commercial reward, that's like an afterthought, not in America. It's nope, I want profit. I want to profit from it. And as we said earlier, while he's gaining this notoriety and, and the Telegraph is now making a dent uh, in the culture, People are coming out of the woodworks claiming that they were the ones who who, who invented it. And uh, he's in and out of court, you know, for, for much of his life. And like, that's something that more, it, it tore him apart. You know, it really uh, got to him um, uh, in, in his outlook on life. Yeah, the endless litigation that many inventors have to go through to, to get patent rights, to protect their patent rights, it's really, it's really, it's sad, it's heartbreaking, it's depressing. And, you know, I'm just glad I don't have to go, you know, go through that because it would tear my, it would tear my heart out. To, you know, it would take me away. I want to be writing books and essays, not fighting in court for copyright titles, you know, and, you know, and, you know, and, and stuff like that. Yep. Yep. So one story, actually 1844, Andy, just wanted to say this real fast. Now he, so he's got it to work, but now what about the over distances? Okay. So they figure, how about DC to Baltimore? It's like 50 something miles. How do we get this to work? Because initially the trans, the, the transmission was only like, you know, 10, 15 feet away. But then they came up with this idea of what's called a relay that boosts the signal, the electromagnetic uh, signal from one spot to another. And they, and they get it all the way going from DC to Baltimore. And famous story of he, he's applying for the Panther. He actually wants some uh, government investment and this woman comes into his office and tells him, you, you, you succeeded. They are going to fund $30,000 to run, uh, from DC to, um, <clears throat> to Baltimore. And he tell and he tells her, he, he, here's where he says, you're going to say, you're going to be the first one to say what you know, what will be transmitted through this telegraph. And uh, it's famous, you know, what Roth, what God had Roth, I think was the, uh, yeah, straight from the Bible. <laughs> what hath God wrought? <laughs> Thank you. First transmission. Somehow I get the on, wrong because it's not like in my, yeah. Yeah, well, he, well he's, a, he's a Calvinist. He's a Calvinist son of a preacher, so he would know all these biblical quotes. <laughs> this is 1844. By 1849, it's uniting uh, Salt Lake City is where they bridge East and West, you know, we're talking about transcontinental uh, railroad, but first it was the telegraph that you united uh, the country in Salt Lake City. And then even for trains, trains didn't have schedules. We didn't have time clock. People didn't know what time it was because looked at time differently. Telegraph that, um, te that communication could go so railroads didn't crash into each other. There were several cases where they saw the practicality of that. Then they start making timetables and now time itself becomes under human control. All of these things just come, you know, come out of, uh, out of the, the telegraph. And one more thing. So you mentioned, there's so many heroes that we, we call back to, you mentioned Car Carnegie, but also Thomas Edison, what was his first job? Telegraph operator, <laughs> first job. Carnegie and Edison both, you know, Carnegie as a, as a kid, you know, like a teenager was an expert telegrapher, you know, sending messages via, you know, on Morse's invention using Morse code. And Edison, Edison uh, improved the, the telegraph. He, Edison, you know, invented the quadruplex 
telegraph, which was which was what you could send four messages at a time on the in the same direction on the same wire. I, I think so. Uh, yeah. So Ed, Edison, yeah, Edison, Edison also uh, gets in gets in here, you know, regarding the telegraph. That was that was his first great invention, I think, was improving the Morse's telegraph. But just moving on with with um, with Morse himself. So uh, even the U, the U.S. Mexican uh, War. Uh, that was like the first time it worked in a war, his, his telegraph, 1847, 48. Uh, and then over mm -hmm. internationally in Denmark, the, the king uh, met Morse and he's like, you know, thank you for what you've done. And that's where uh, the idea of having a, this trans, uh, transatlantic uh, communication, which, uh, you know, it's just astounding the way they, the way they pull that off as well. And there's some documentary footage you can you can find uh, up on uh, YouTube. These big ships just dropping this cable down. So uh, invention after invention leads to Marconi. You know, mentioned Edison, then leads to Marconi with the radio, uh, and then uh, in, in the twentieth century, leading on to the electronics boom, all the way up. And it's it, you know, Andy, if if we just for me like wrap, wrapping up his uh, Morse's influence. It's hardly used anymore. Morse code is hardly used anymore. Sometimes on ships, but even satellites, you know, uh, are now like replacing it. But we still know SOS. You know, we still know, you know, the dots and dashes. And uh, once you the point where they the invention has given so much value that now there are newer things that just take that, you, you know, the. Uh, that, that progress, the ascent of, of man, uh, so to speak, that, okay, we've really maximized what this can do because we have so many newer things that are now superior given the knowledge we have. Right. So, you know, we criticized Morse, one for being, I just, I can't even get my he was a northerner in, in New England, you know, during the heyday of the abolitionist movement, he was pro-slavery, but he was, so we had to criticize him for that, uh, criticize, you know, for his uh, prejudice against Catholic immigrants. Also, you know, one last criticism I would make is he's seeking government money to, to back his uh, invention rather than private funding, which means taxpayer dollars. Yes, I don't know the details of that as well as I'd like to. Uh, but yeah, there was a little bit, that was a factor. I'll, ju I'll just, uh, I'm going to say that was a factor. Taxpayers certainly got their money's worth with, you know, with the, with the telegraph and the Morse code, but still, you know, we know how James J. Hill built the great Northern railroad. This is, this was, this is right before, yeah, 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 yeah. Right before, you know, all our private investment, not on government money. So, so, you know, I would you know, criticize Morse for, for, for seeking government money from Congress rather than from private investors. Nevertheless, when we, well, ever, you know, so we criticize him for his flaws or his errors. Nevertheless, he is a towering figure in 19th century America culture, both as a painter and as a, and maybe especially as a great painter, but especially the invention of the telegraph and the Morse code enormously facilitated uh, human life. Yeah, you know, we always, always point out, and I think it bears repetition, human beings are often mixed, including uh, heroes. You know, and I just happened to have a copy of, of this book just by accident here. You know, Heroes, Heroes, Legends, Champions, you know, you know my, my book on heroes. And I used Thomas Jefferson as, you know, as, as a prime example of a, of a morally flawed hero. Uh, he was certainly morally flawed, but he was, but he did these gigantic things also in promotion of human life, and he's a towering hero. Well, so is Morse, morally flawed, but his achievements vastly outweigh, you know, his flaws. And I and I think we get we get salute him and thank you, yo, know, thank you for man, man, you know he may Lightning Man, right? He, Lightning Man may well be the the individual who most yeah yeah Lightning Man you like. He'll be the, the single individual who most initiated the communication revolution. I think we have done justice by the by the great man, by yes. Samuel Morse. And I want to you know, wish everybody to out there in Hero Land to lead a more uh, have a have a heroic day, lead a more heroic life. And we, we're all gonna strive to lead more heroic lives, and we'll be back yes. once again next week on the Hero Show.